Hey YouTube, welcome back. Today I'm going to walk you through the ultimate fat loss plan. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through step by step what you need to do to get a fat loss response. We're going to talk calories, we're going to talk nutrition in general, we're going to talk daily expenditure, we're going to talk training, and then we're also going to mention a few other aspects away from those areas. If you do find the video helpful please do drop a like if you have any questions throughout drop them down below and i'll get back to you if you haven't already please go ahead and subscribe because it helps me out a ton and you'll be able to keep up to date with my future videos okay so let's jump straight in we want to drop body fat what's the main thing and the first thing we need to focus on doing that is creating a calorie deficit okay creating a calorie deficit means taking in less calories than you are expending and is vital for dropping body fat. Without being in a calorie deficit, you will not drop body fat. Now, for us, and for the best plan of going around dropping body fat, to create this calorie deficit, we're gonna focus on two areas. And those two areas are gonna be the first things we want to establish. Okay, so number one, the very first thing is our calorie intake, okay? We need to get control and consistency of our calories and make sure they're in a position, a place, an amount that is going to help us put us in a calorie deficit. Now, for this example, for this plan, I would say track calories. Okay, you can use apps like MyFitnessPal, but I would say track calories. Why? Because for this fat loss plan, this is going to be a very precise plan. Okay. When we're following something like this, we're looking for a response and a result in let's say 12, 16, 20 weeks, okay? This isn't gonna be something that you're necessarily just gonna wing. This is gonna be something that you're gonna set up and you're gonna to stick to. So we need the accuracy there, okay? Tracking calories is gonna give you that accuracy. Now, what are you gonna do? You can do this over a week or two weeks. I personally would do it over two weeks because it's gonna give you a bit more information um, but you can essentially, obviously, do the first week, see how you get on, do the second week, and then go from there. But you're going to take your weight. So you're going to take your body weight at the start of the first week. You're going to then track your calorie intake every single day. Now, when we're tracking our calorie intake every single day, at this point, we're not focusing on hitting a number. We're just tracking our daily intake to see where it is. We're then gonna take our weight again at the end. So you can take it at the end of the first week. And then if you're gonna do two weeks, you can take it at the end of the second week as well. And then at the end, you're also gonna get an average of your calories, okay? So let's say you get an average of, of the one week and or the two weeks, add up your calories for each day, divide it by seven to get the average for that week. Once you've then got the average of your calories and the difference in your weight from the beginning to the end, you can then get an idea of where your calories are currently sat in relation to how your weight is changing. So if your weight dropped a pound over that week or each week, if you did two weeks and your calories on average were, let's say, 2000, you could guesstimate with that information that if you sit on 2000 calories with your given expenditure, which we're going to come on to in a minute, you're dropping one pound a week. If you're happy at dropping one pound a week, you know I just need to keep my calories at 2,000. Now, if you want to adjust your calories, let's say your weight held, so you're not in a calorie deficit, or let's say you want to take it from one pound to two pounds a week, so you need to increase the size of that calorie deficit, we're going to use a rule called the 500 calorie rule. And what this means is for every 500 calories, you're in a deficit you will drop one pound a week. Not exact maths, but it gives us a number to go off. So let's go back to that previous example. If we were dropping one pound a week and our average calories was 2000, that would tell us that 2000 calories a day, again, with the given expenditure, which we're currently doing, but we'll come on to that. We are in a 500 calorie deficit. So if we were to take calories up by 500 to 2,500 a day, that would take us up to maintenance and we wouldn't be in a deficit. If we want to increase our fat loss to two pounds a week and we were currently losing one pound a week on 2,000, 
going off the 500 calorie rule, an extra 500 calories in a deficit means an extra one pound a week lost, we would have to reduce our calories by 500. So in that example, we could reduce our food to 1,500 each day, and we could expect a two pound a week loss. So hopefully that makes sense, okay? Over the week or two weeks, you're seeing how much your weight is changing in relation to how many calories you're on, on average. From there, using the 500 calorie rule, you can then adjust your calories to put you in a position that you're going to get a response that you're happy with. This is all given that our expenditure is consistent to, which we'll come on to now. Okay, so the, okay, so the calorie section we just went through is the most complicated part of this video. Okay, so if you made it through that, the rest is easy. Number two, daily steps. Daily steps, so the amount of steps we're hitting each day, is going to be the easiest way to keep energy expenditure consistent and to adjust to the future. Okay, so this is the second part of creating our calorie deficit. We've done the calories, now it's the daily steps. This is very, very simple. You just want to make sure that you are hitting a consistent amount of steps day to day. Okay, now, as I said in the calorie section, the adjustments we were making was going off our expenditure being consistent, right? So let's say in the previous example, where we were on 2000 calories, dropping one pound a week, we were also hitting, let's say, 8,000 steps. Now, from here, okay, if we're happy with one pound a loss, we can just keep steps at 8,000, make sure we're hitting 8,000 every single day. But like I said, we spoke about one, let's take our um, weekly loss up to two pounds. I spoke about the 500 calorie deficit rule, okay? That 500 calories doesn't just have to come from reduced intake. It can also come from increased expenditure, okay? It can come from both combined. So you might wanna take food down by 250, but we also might wanna take calorie expenditure up by 250 to equal that 500. Now, the amount of calories we burn from expenditure is very much a guesstimate, very much a guesstimate, okay? So I wouldn't really get too stuck up on the exact numbers of how many calories you're burning. All I would simply do is make a relatively good guesstimate at an increase and then man track your weight, see what your weight does and get that data. So in this example, we might want to take steps up to 10,000 while we drop food down to 1,750 and then manage, see what our weight does. If our weight drops to two pound a week, we can consistently stay on 10,000 steps. So once you've now got control over intake and daily expenditure, you've made those adjustments to get the rate of loss that you're after. Those are the two biggest factors in creating your deficit. You're just now gonna be consistent with them and adjust them as needed as time goes on. Now we're gonna look at other things outside of that that are gonna help us with our fat loss. Number three is going to be weight training, okay? Now, keep this dead, dead simple. Weight training wants to be the priority of your training because it's gonna help you retain muscle mass. Now, all I would do here is give yourself a realistic number of times you can train each week, okay? So have a look, see how many times you can train each week, whether that's three times, four times, five times, whatever you can stick to consistently. Then simply weight train that many times a week. So if you can if you can get to the gym three times a week, weight train three times a week. If you can get to the gym four times a week, weight train four times a week. That's gonna help you then retain muscle mass throughout. Number four, protein intake. Simply put here again, protein is gonna help with muscle retention. So we wanna make sure daily we're hitting a minimum amount. That minimum amount would be 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. Okay, so take your body weight in pounds, times it by 0 0.8 to 1.2, and that's gonna give you in grams the amount of protein that you wanna hit day to day. It could be anywhere within this. If it's anywhere within this, you'll be fine. I wouldn't go under 0 0.8, and I wouldn't feel the need to go over 1.2. And then lastly, we have sleep. Right, and now let's keep this dead, dead simple. Sleep will play a very, very, very big part and role in your fat loss. 
If you get terrible sleep, you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage. If you get fantastic sleep, you're putting yourself at a huge advantage for getting really good fat loss results. Okay, this has been shown in studies. It Sleep is just vitally important. Now, keep this simple. You want to make sure on a consistent basis you are getting good quality sleep. Okay. Now, that doesn't only mean trying to get at least six hours sleep a night, you know, upwards to let's say eight. It also means the quality of sleep, so how you're sleeping wants to be good. I've done multiple videos on how to get good quality sleep, so I'm not going to go through it in this video because I don't want this video to be too long. So go check that out in terms of how to make sure your sleep quality is good. But just know this prioritize your sleep make sure you're doing things to get to make your sleep as good as possible because it will help a ton so there you have it they're the basics and that is the fundamentals of this plan that will help you drop body fat obviously there's little finer details that you can look at for example you know weight training we delve into you know little finer details of weight training and what to be doing you know carb fats if you're that bothered about them but you maybe don't necessarily need to be sleep routine stuff like that the little factors you know hunger management there's little things that are obviously going to help and i've done smaller videos on them i don't want to make this video too long but in terms of the fundamentals make sure you're nailing those five things that we went through and this plan will help you drop body fat if you found this video helpful please drop a like if you have any questions okay or going through your fat loss if you're struggling throw me a message i'm more than happy to help and if you haven't already, please do subscribe because that helps me out a ton. I'll catch you on the next one.